This is Public Occurrences, both foreign and domestic. And now your host, Michael O'Fallon. Well, today we will be looking at part two of the Great Reset of Energy. And to help you to navigate the waters that are going to be ahead of us in the next several years, I want to help you with a pattern of thinking that has helped me through the years in navigating and avoiding storms on the horizon. And this pattern of thinking has also helped me to give proper guidance to corporate and political clients who have hired me or my organization as a consultant over the years. It has helped me to prepare good people for what is coming. And I think it would help all of you to think consequentially. To think consequentially is to think about the consequences of each of your actions, and not just your actions, but the actions of others, your friends, your competition, and your adversaries. Now, thinking consequentially can also help you to think through reflexive movements and will give you the ability to understand, consequentially, how each crisis of the quarter is meant to spin the wheel of reflexivity that will inevitably lead to consequences that are either unintended or strategically intentional. So in thinking consequentially, you can begin to see the many ripples that will form in the mirrored pond once the stone strikes the surface of the water. How one major crisis or action creates a multitude of other consequential crises and how each of those crises, as well, are rocks striking the surface of other areas of that same still water pond, creating overlapping consequential actions, overlapping consequential actions that can create a rogue wave. The discussion of rogue waves were all the rage a few years ago, and a rogue wave is a giant wave that is not the result of a large storm, but that seemingly comes from nowhere with no other accompanying waves. But most scientists and oceanographers would agree that the majority of rogue waves are the result of what is called diffractive focusing. According to this hypothesis, coast shape or seabed shape directs several small waves to meet in phase. Their crest heights combine to create a freak wave. And that is exactly what is happening in our hypothetical still pond. Many rocks at different areas of the pond, striking the same still, calm pond, that create a million ripples, where those hundreds of rippling waves meet other small waves to meet in phase, to create a freakish, monstrous, damaging, rogue wave. So when an event occurs in the world, when an event occurs in our nation, I will always look around to see what other rocks are hitting the same pond at the same time, to create hundreds of waves that are eventually converging, that create our civilization-changing rogue wave, that crashes into our shoreside city and demolishes our seaside civilization. Let me see if I can give you a couple of examples of what I'm talking about in real life. After the mess that was the November 3rd, 2020 election, well, the first thing that Joe Biden did upon entering the White House was to begin to unwind America from energy independence. And you should have thought, consequentially. And what you should have thought is, that's going to be a major problem before too long. And what would have helped is if you would have had thought all of the different areas in which there will be problems, and how those various areas and arenas of problems will, by design, will create a multitude of other consequential crises, and how each of those crises as well are rocks striking the surface of other areas of that same still water pond, creating overlapping consequential actions. And that we will have an enormous problem created in our nation that is actually meant to break our systems. So when the United States, under the governing strategies of Donald Trump, was in place, the United States had reached a point of 
energy independence. In other words, the United States has in and of itself the ability to produce our own oil, gas, natural gas, and petroleum products to both supply our current needs to be a prosperous nation and continue to operate without any price hikes, supply chain disruptions, or boom and bust cycles that would hurt our families, our citizens, and the corporations that call America home. And we would also be future-proof against any foreign wars that may disrupt and dismantle our future oil and gas supplies, because we already have the capacity to produce our own oil and gas without dependence on foreign oil and gas suppliers. In other words, the Trump administration made sure that America was protected from any major shocks to our system created by overseas wars or embargoes or supply chain disruptions from BRIC nations or from OPEC. And so, the Trump administration, in its own way, which was quite imperfect, by the way, was trying to think pragmatically and consequentially. Because if our needed supply of gas and oil was disrupted, well, then bad things could happen. Now, of course, we all know that Joe Biden has been locked arm and arm with Klaus Schwab and his Build Back Better plan since his campaign in 2019. And Joe Biden promised everyone that, if elected, he would end reliance on fossil fuels in our nation. So the Biden administration is simply doing what they said that they would do from way back in 2019. And the Biden administration will use every crisis, both at home and abroad, to accelerate the process of ending fossil fuel in the United States. So here is how that starts. First, along with Joe Biden and his administration, multi-trillion dollar behemoth BlackRock and then as well Vanguard have been more than vocal about the world's need to transition to a carbon-free economy. And the world's largest money manager has pushed its portfolio companies to set targets for reaching a zero-emissions world. And when I say BlackRock and Vanguard's portfolio companies, I mean Phillips 66, Occidental Petroleum, Valero Energy, ConocoPhillips, and ExxonMobil. So BlackRock and Vanguard are attempting to bring the world to zero emissions while owning major controlling stock and influence on the board of directors on the world's largest oil and gas companies. Now that kind of sounds like a conflict of interest, doesn't it? Well, that is because it is a conflict of interest for what those companies were designed and purpose to do, to source gas and oil, produce that gas and oil, and make profits for their shareholders. And the officially stated position of portfolio manager BlackRock and their evil emperor Larry Fink is to do the opposite of producing and selling gas and oil. BlackRock and Vanguard's goal is to disrupt and dismantle the oil and gas industry. Now, along with this, BlackRock and Vanguard own the largest shareholders of auto manufacturers like Ford, GM, and also have large stakes in Toyota, Volkswagen, and Hyundai. And while the official word is that there are chip shortages that are preventing us from getting any new cars anywhere in the United States or Europe, and by the way, this is the same thing that, that has been said since the end of 2020. Well, I want you to think through this issue consequentially. Let me ask you a question. Do you believe that, if times were normal, that the entirety of the automotive industry would be willing to sit by and be crushed as they lose a now estimated approximately $225 billion in sales over the past two years without going to Congress or demanding an emergency act to produce chips here in the United States? Again, that was $225 billion in losses. So yeah, you believe that the car manufacturers, if everything was normal in a normal society, in a normal way of things, we do things in our civilization, would be patient as they lose nearly a quarter of a trillion dollars because of a chip shortage caused by COVID, which it's not caused by COVID, 
It's the reaction to COVID, which is, of course, unsustainable. And now you must think consequentially. And as I have been in the market for a new car for over this past year, and as I have been talking to all sorts of good men and women who are sales managers all across the Tampa Bay area and beyond, I explained to them that what was actually happening is, and as I began to explain consequentially what was happening, by the way, they began to listen because they understand that there is something wrong, very wrong, and that they are being lied to. Because if you want to meet some people who are really suffering from the effects of the Great Reset, I mean, let's call it what it is. If you really want to meet some people who are facing the effects of this Great Reset out of oil and gas and individual auto ownership, well then speak to auto salesmen, because they know that something is up. But they just can't put their finger on it just yet. And I will explain to you what this is all about. It is about every oil and gas company, every auto manufacturer, every aircraft manufacturer, every car dealership, every shipmaker, every travel provider is committed to three things. First, they are all committed to be in compliance with ESG guidelines. And ESG guidelines will be a new integrated part of our new central bank digital currencies. And as the Biden administration destroys our U.S. dollar, which, by the way, was the reserve currency for purchasing oil and gas around the world, which is one of the reasons that everyone in the West is getting off our oil and is getting off of oil and gas, period, to disrupt and dismantle the United States and to destroy the U.S. dollar. So I digress, but ESG is our new guideline and framework for both corporate and personal credit. And the E in ESG stands for environmental. Environmental scoring factors range from a company's greenhouse gas emissions to its treatment of animals. And the evaluation criteria includes metrics on climate change, soil and water contamination, renewable energy, environmental policy. So in other words, the E in ESG is purposed and meant to create the end of petroleum-based products in the Western Hemisphere. Now, the second reason why all oil and gas and car, plane and ship manufacturers are destroying their own businesses, committing corporate suicide, is because they are all committed to the UN and World Economic Forum Agenda 2030, 17 sustainability goals. And as that goal is to meet a net zero of carbon emissions, they are all lockstep committed with all of their necessary partners to accomplish the goal of team enviro-communo-fascism and the beginning of Klaus Schwab's and Herbert Marcuse's dream of the new totalitarian utopia. So thirdly, here's what I can tell you for sure. Number one, gas prices will only increase. Now, there might be a short respite in the steep incline of prices before the 2022 elections, but they will continue to climb. Number two, new cars will not be readily forthcoming, neither gas or electric. Think of how supply was in the Soviet Union or in Cuba back when they were taken over. Remember that in Cuba, everybody stayed with those 1950s and early 60s cars because that's when things stopped. Now, this doesn't mean that there will not be some rather expensive electric cars that will be available, but they will not be available en masse. In other words, it won't be for all of the general public. There won't be anywhere near the same kind of sales figures that you had just back in 2019. Those days will not return. Number three, self-volitional driving will now be promoted. The wave of the future will be Lyft or Uber type of services that will take those with high ESG scores wherever they want to go. Those with low ESG scores will be penalized. And by the way, the new Uber or Lyft type of services will certainly be all electric because of the fact that they need to make sure that their ESG scores are in line. Number four, while electric cars will be pushed in the near future, the end of car ownership is the goal. 
That is how we arrive at Pete Buttigieg's zero car accident deaths by 2030, because if you don't have car ownership and you are not volitionally driving your car, and somehow it is actually satellite controlled, well, all of those satellite controlled cars within the grid will be avoiding one another. They will be stopping when they need to stop. There will be no one's falling asleep at the wheel. There'll be no drunk driving. There'll be no careless driving at all. And what you'll have is perfect driving. But it won't be you that's driving. It'll be artificial intelligence that's driving you to where you need to go. Number five. Air travel will begin to significantly slow as flight costs become unattainable for the average consumer, and then demand destruction occurs. In other words, you will start to see some flights inch up in price, maybe $20, $30, $50 per flight, and it'll be still continuing until another crisis occurs, whether that be another shock to the oil supply, maybe that'll be a decision by OPEC, who knows what it'll be. But what it'll be is unfortunately the lack of opportunity for you to go, let's say if you're in Florida, to go visit some friends in Minnesota or New York or Virginia. And then you're starting to think, well, I'll just drive instead. But now all of a sudden, gas is at $7 per gallon. And that car that you have, maybe it's six, seven years old. And some of the parts for repairing it aren't available. Maybe you're starting to see where this all goes. You see, they won't have to clamp down on you. You're just going to clamp down on yourself. In other words, travel will not be the easy, cheap, and frequent thing that it used to be. Number six, as gas and oil become ridiculously expensive, so will all food items and other electronic and domestic goods. So the average person will be priced out of the market. And where do they turn? Now again, I need you to think consequentially. If the average person is unable to afford to drive to work, well then all of a sudden at-home digital work becomes the norm. And hence, we get closer to net zero carbon emissions. But some people are not skilled in digital arts or digital-based positions or in business or white-collar type of jobs. And so there will be, necessarily, universal basic income. And that, of course, will mean that there will be intersectional guidelines to that universal basic income. And those intersectional guidelines will be ESG. What will occur as well is people are not able to get the things they normally get and to have the normal buying patterns that they normally have, is that there will be a lack of food. And food will become a major problem. And so the government rationing will begin. And choice in food and other goods will become a thing of the past. And the government will be the one determining whether or not you receive a meal today The government will also be deciding whether or not your children will be eating this week. Now, the second result of the strategic energy policy that will destroy our way of life and disrupt and dismantle our economy will be that looting and stealing will begin. Because there will be some that will still have, but 90% of those will have not. Which is why in Los Angeles, San Francisco, St. Louis, and Philadelphia. This is why you have Soros-backed district attorneys whose policies will result in looting and murder. And also with a new form of justice, a new way to look at the law and enforcement of the law. And they would like that to happen because then you'll be begging the federal government to come in and protect you before, let's say, Atlanta turns into Portland, Oregon, or San Francisco. And all of this crime wave is a result of the energy policies in the beginning. Of course, there are other things that go along with it. 
but this is a direct result. You know, and another result of this oil and energy policy of the Bidens and going along with the Build Back Better plan of what the World Economic Forum wants to do. And the next result will be the destruction of the travel and convention and event industry. And this is why, if you attend the convention that is sponsored by the Enviro Communo Fascist Organization known as IMEX, this is why they will be promoting virtual and meta meetings and destinations more than ever this year. Yes. The travel and event industry is attempting to dismantle the travel industry with smiles on their faces while making you feel all virtuous about doing your part as you end the liberty and freedom of human beings to travel. And that is some of the what that is happening in our current planned and strategized energy crisis today. And we will get into the why in a future episode. But do remember this as we think through consequentially of the causes of things. Remember that we must win. I'm Michael O'Fallon, and this has been Public Occurrences, both foreign and domestic. Thank you.